Good morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, our hope and our salvation, I greet you and I welcome you to this service of worship. We gather as God's people here in the building at St. James and in all of the places where we're worshiping online this morning. We come together in faith, trusting and hoping in God's love and filled with God's grace. Please be seated if you're present here in the building. This time I would draw your attention to the life and work of our church, which is found printed in our order of service in the announcements. Uh, if you're present in the building with us today, uh, there are bulletins which are found uh, in your uh, seats. If you are worshiping with us online, the bulletin can be found either in PDF format on one side uh, of the website or at the very top where it says weekly announcements. Uh, St. James Men's Club, there's an announcement for them. They have some lobster that they're looking to sell, uh, some uh, cold pack lobster, which is frozen. Uh, there's information there on the prices and when you might be able to pick it up. And I certainly would draw it to your attention and action as appropriate. Next Sunday, God willing, uh, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. Uh, we are waiting to get, we have, um, prepared packages uh, for communion so that the communion will be in the pews uh, in a sterilized container. Uh, it will be the, the bread at the very top and then the, the juice underneath. Um, 
if you are interested in joining us uh, for the live stream or the online worship and to celebrate communion as we do, we invite you to either prepare your own elements or give a call to the church office if you're worshiping with us online uh, and pick up some elements through the week. The other announcements are as printed in your order of service and I certainly would draw them to your attention and your action as appropriate. Let's take a moment and gather ourselves for prayer. Please join with me in our call to worship. We are called as Christians not to be conformed to this world, for we seek to discern what is the will of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the world around us, many voices counsel us, many forces pressure us, and many things tempt us. So we need your love to hold us, your wisdom to guide us, and your grace to transform us. Speak to us this day, we ask, for we have gathered as your people to listen and learn in Jesus' name. Amen. There's an old story told about a huge windstorm that blew one day in a coastal community. And the waves were crashing and the wind was blowing and there was a tremendous rain. And when the morning came, everything was calm. And so a woman who lived nearby thought to herself on a beautiful early morning when everything's calm, I'm gonna walk along the beach. And when she arrived at the beach, she saw that lots of things had been blown ashore uh, during the storm. And she noticed that there were starfish all over. And she noticed that because she saw a little girl who was on the beach and she would take a starfish and she would run it out to the water and she would gently place it in the water and then she'd run back and grab another starfish. And the woman watched her do this. And she walked up to where the little girl had just picking up a starfish and she said, you realize the whole beach is full of starfish that this has happened to. You, there's no possible way, even if you spend all day for you to get all the starfish and put them back in, what difference is it going to make? And the little girl said, holding up the starfish, it's going to make a difference to this starfish. And she took and she put it in the water and went back to get another one. And the woman thought about it for a few moments and then she picked up a starfish and started putting them in the water with the little girl. When we look around the world, especially at this time, it seems like the problems are overwhelming. There's no simple fix to the fisheries dispute. There's no simple fix to COVID. There's no simple fix to climate change. There's no simple fix to anything that seems to be going on. Um, and so it would be easy for us to just throw up our hands and say, there's nothing we can do. We can't make a difference. But we are reminded again and again in scripture and by the Holy Spirit that there is something we can do. That every small action we take, either in calling out evil or promoting good, either in caring for others or tearing down something that's hurtful, we are making a difference. And that difference is important to the peoples whose lives get touched. Let us right now join our hearts together and pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to invite those who are heading off to children's worship to go with Christine.
Please join with me in our responsive reading, which is found printed in our order of service. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will I look for help? God will not let your foot stumble, the one who protects Israel will not slumber. It is God who protects you, your defense at your right hand. God will protect you from all evil. God will protect your life. First lesson this morning comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, reading in the 45th chapter. Thus says the Lord to his, to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Beside me there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. And from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved of God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction just as you know what kind of people we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution we received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Acacia. And from the Gospel of Jesus according to Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then Jesus said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. May God bless to us a further understanding of these words, and to the name of God be eternal glory and honor and praise. Amen.
wash your hands, wear a mask, keep six feet apart, and stay home when you're feeling unwell. Those are the basic steps that public health have told us are necessary to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and keep ourselves healthy. The practices are there to help keep us from getting sick during this pandemic, but more than that, by following them, we are helping to keep our neighbors and family and community safe. And those instructions are on posters here at the church to remind us that as well as good health practices backed up by science, they're also a way for showing our love for one another, a way for us to follow Jesus in the world, a way for us to be God's people. Because the truth is that what we believe and what we hope is expressed, not just by our prayers and our presence at worship, but how we live within the world. This morning's gospel lesson is a confrontation between Jesus and the Pharisees, who, as the texts tell us, are trying to trip him up and have the crowds turn on him. Those opponents of Jesus start by saying how good and honest and holy he is, and then ask what seems like a simple question. Is it lawful to pay taxes? And I need to pause and give a bit of historical background because honestly, that question doesn't seem all that difficult to answer. None of us like paying taxes, but because we get health care, roads, fire protection, police service, and so much more, we may grumble, but we see the value in contributing some of our money for the common good. But our situation and the reality of the people around Jesus who are living in is much, much different. The first listeners to Jesus are a conquered people. So their taxes, the taxes they pay, actually make their lives worse. The money goes out of the country to Rome. It goes to pay for the soldiers who enforce the will of the emperor with brutality. And the money lines the pocket of corrupt and greedy officials. The people get nothing from their taxes except grief and more taxes. And what the Pharisees ask are, is it faithful? Is it something that a good person does, something lawful under the commandments of God to pay taxes to an evil empire that rejects God and brings suffering to so many? And of course, because of the way that I've phrased that, the answer seems obvious. We shouldn't support such a thing with our money. And in fact, a faithful response is to resist such oppression and evil with all of our might. But remember, this is a question asked to trap Jesus. If Jesus says, yes, it's faithful to pay money to the conquerors, then the people will stop listening to him because they know how evil the taxes of Rome are for them. And if Jesus answers, no, it's, it's not faithful to pay money to Rome, then the soldiers will quickly step in and kill Jesus and scatter his followers. So while on the surface the question seems like an honest inquiry, how do we reconcile faith and the world, what the world asks of us, the question is actually an attempt to destroy the reputation and the ministry of Jesus. But Jesus answers them anyway. He asks one of the questioners to show him a coin used to pay the taxes and tell him whose picture is on it and what their title is. And this is when the plan to trap Jesus starts to come apart. Because the Pharisees have to answer that the coin has the picture of the emperor on it. And again, a bit of historical background. Roman coins all have pictures of the emperors on them and the titles for the emperor always claim that they're gods. The emperors are, at the time, worshipped as gods, and the images on the coins are used as idle when there's nothing else available. And remember, the Ten Commandments tell us not to have idols or to worship them, and the truth is that Roman coins are just that. So when the questioners of Jesus have already made their compromises with the world, when they show Jesus what they have in their pockets, they're skirting the strict demands of faith and aren't as pure and holy as they pretend to be. But Jesus doesn't dwell on that, but says the line which is familiar not just within the church but in our society, 
Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. Or in the older translation, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's and to, unto God the things that are God's. A response which amazes everyone because it answers the question and it makes sense to both the crowds and to the Romans. Because the Romans hear Jesus say that people should pay their taxes and they can't have any argument with that. And the crowds hear Jesus say that they're to give to the Romans what belongs to them and they really can't dispute that. If the coin is Roman and the Romans want it back, then you give it to them. Simple and straightforward. But the truth is that Jesus is saying something a bit more complicated in his answer because he doesn't just say give to the emperor what belongs to the emperor. He also says, give to God what belongs to God. And think about that for a moment. What belongs to God? What do we owe God? How do we give to God what belongs to God? And in our thoughts, we realize that Jesus' answer is not simply to accept what's happening in the world and do whatever we're told, but that our lives within the world are always and at every moment to be lived out with faith. For God gives us everything we have, our lives, grace, mercy, peace, hope, and unending love, and we in turn owe it to God to live our lives in answer to those gifts. And so when those two phrases are put together, Jesus is saying, it's fine to live in a society with laws and things like taxes, they're part of life on earth. You live among people with different values, beliefs, and practices, and that are demands on you from them. But, and this is what's important, the fact is that our first obligation, our priority, is on answering God in our lives. We're to be good citizens, but our most important quality is to be good people of faith. Now, Thankfully for us, living where we do and the time we do, those things usually line up. I have no problem telling you to pay your taxes because I know how those taxes help people and provide services which we all use and we all need. But there are times when the demands of this world and the call of God are at odds. When we're asked to tolerate things that are unjust and wrong when we're told to be quiet when we call for justice and fairness, when our neighbors are pushing for violence instead of reconciliation, when the demands of the world lead away from God. And at those times, our priority, our decision must be to answer God and to follow Christ in our lives. For that's what it means to give back to God what God has given to us. After all, God has given us life, grace, mercy, and opportunity, and so we're to live faithfully in community with others and work to build a better world. We're to help others, not because they earn it or deserve it, but because we're acting as God has acted toward us in Christ. For we're to use what we have, what we've been given, to promote and encourage what is good and what is beautiful. We're to reconcile and build cooperation especially when we become divided. For we are to seek what God intends and be a part of what God is doing in this world. Let us come before God with what we hold in our hearts. Let us pray. Lord, in your hands we gather this day. Kindle within our spirits a desire to know you and to honor you. Create in our hearts a desire for service and make us eager and ready to do your will and to reach out to those around us with love and grace. Open our minds 
to better know your plans for us and the world. And above all, bless us with the wisdom and strength to walk in faith this day and all of our days. For we know that being a disciple of Jesus in the world today is not easy. So remove from within us any selfish motivations. Strengthen our resolve to be humble and certain. Open our ears and eyes to learn from those who are walking beside us. And when we grow weary, remind us to lean on you. When we grow angry, work within our lives to renew our patience and faith. When we lose our patience, show us once more that you will not stop the good work that you began in us until it's completed. As your people seeking to follow in faith, we pray for ourselves and for each other. Be with those who are in hospital, those who are undergoing treatments, those who are awaiting tests and results. Be with those whose work has become so much more difficult during this time of COVID. And where tempers have become short and communities have split, especially around the fishery, a COVID outbreak or any other reason. Let your spirit of peace move us to work, not against one another, but with you to find a better way forward for everyone. For we pray this prayer and those we hold in our hearts, trusting and believing that you answer us in grace and bring hope each day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you go out into the day and the week ahead, everything that God ha you have is God's gift to you, and everything that you do with what you have is your gift back to God. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all of your days. Amen. <laughs>